right, this first file here is a Jeep Wrangler. Had a misfire code. Always a good idea with a misfire code to look at relative compression. Setting that up, it takes no time at all if you have things situated and ready to go on a cart. We're talking, you know, one to two minutes. Now, finding the right picoscope can take some time. This right here, these blue humps going upwards, if you look up here, that's amps. So about 100 to 170 amps. And this is each piston coming up on top dead center compression. There's no dip, which would indicate loss of compression or low compression. But sometimes you need to actually bring things closer together. Um, let me try and do that here to really see kind of what's going on with uh, any particular cylinder. Let's zoom in here. Drag the cursor down so it peaks up at 172 amps. You see that right there. Now looking at this, we actually do have some low cylinders on the opposite bank. So assuming that I triggered cylinder one, red, you know, red line here is ignition coil for cylinder one. Firing order is one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well then the whole bank is low on compression it looks like. Now this is uh, 2016 Finistar 3.6 Jeep Wrangler dual overhead cam variable valve timing. So two is low, four is low, six is low. Now there's a strong possibility on this engine, every exhaust guide is worn and we have just subpar compression. Maybe not even enough to throw a misfire code, but probably enough to affect the way it idles and maybe even, even noise and stuff like that. Um, one of the other things about these engines is when they transfer, when a valve transfers heat, the heat from the combustion is supposed to go into the valve head, to the valve seat, into the casting of the head, to the coolant that's behind that. But heat can also, if the seat's worn, start shooting up the valve stem and that that valve stem can transfer the heat to the actual uh, rocker arm. And some people think that's why the needle bearings are wearing out. The needle bearings are getting too hot or it's just, you know breaking down the oil within the roller of the rocker, but that's really a hard one to prove. There's no oil caking, so I'm not sure if that's a possibility in reality, but um, yeah, so this situation, I believe it was a bad uh, ignition coil on number five. Good idea to take notes. This Ram 1500 with the Feld battery. Now you can see the voltage dropping really low. Right here, we're dropping down to Six, 6.5 volts. Now this is a failed battery. Now when the voltage drops you see the current on the starter motor starts to drop here. It's dropping down and then voltage kind of jumps up a little bit and the current starts to go back up. And it, you know, you can actually get a uh, higher current draw on a starter if the voltage is lower. So it's kind of a little bit backwards and what people seem to think about Ohm's law when it comes to batteries, the weaker the battery, the higher the current draw on the battery um, to try and get the starter to get past the compression stroke. So pulling, uh, one of the reasons that you should test your battery and your customer's batteries because when you're actually you know using a worn out battery that starter is getting hotter from that higher current draw and those 
brushes and windings um, they're you know they're working harder because of the excess current that's going through the starter solenoid so a lot of that stuff you know a lot of the reasons the starter fails after a battery is really because the contact plate in the starter solenoid that's part of the starter in most cars now that's copper and when you double and triple the current from a leaf battery it's actually causing some arc welding to go on sometimes and maybe the solenoid isn't strong enough to pull in fast enough and that's going to arc weld the starter solenoid contacts in the starter so testing the battery you know every six months parts stores can do it for free you can do it at your local shop that's pretty important in my mind i mean that's probably one of the most overlooked things too is testing the battery at oil change places too um, now if they show you a printout that's great if it just has a check mark for the battery test maybe uh not the greatest thing so yeah that's top of my list for checking any vehicle as a battery especially for electrical issues it can create some weird uh, issues make you think that you have a battery drain stuff like that so in this picoscope file we're going to look at uh 2012 ram 1500 it's a uh, 5.7 liter hemi has a little bit of engine noise but it's throwing a misfire code and cutting out cylinder three when you're actually driving it and it's not it doesn't always occur but you look at the misfire monitor and you're not really seeing any misfires until you go and, and start driving it now um, performing a compression test with a gauge it showed every cylinder at it close to 200 PSI. Now cylinder three was a little bit higher. In that situation, um, there's a few things that you can do. Switch the coil, obviously is where we start. Injectors move things around. It didn't change on the road test. Now, experience told me that I sound like camshaft lobe wear. Now trying to prove that with basic uh, tools, it's really difficult. Some guys say they can, you know, catch it on running compression or a snap throttle with a normal compression gauge, but I haven't been able to do that. And I've seen a few. So we're going to look at the Pico scope using intake, again, intake and exhaust pull sensors and current clamp for relative compression to start. So let's do that. The number three coil on this uh, snapshot here, this recording, is actually the one I'm triggering off of. I like to use one, but sometimes I use a cylinder that's throwing the misfire code. So we're looking right now. Now we see the green, which is intake manifold pulls. So this is intake vacuum. You see that it's negative below the zero mark. It's in voltage. I'm using Cody Diagnostics pull sensors hundred bucks or so great for the price and it's cheaper than the first look sensor but what I'm what we're looking for is a abnormal signal to indicate mechanical issue so at this point in theory is if you have uh, intake or exhaust pulse that's out of sequence with the others higher or lower like this one right here that indicates a mechanical issue now we're looking at the, uh, the uh, current draw of the starter here and cylinder three right there is always higher current draw. So that could be valve timing, carbon buildup in a cylinder causing higher compression, um, a valve not opening far enough, stuff like that. So looking here, we have an intake pull that isn't correct and the exhaust pulses, we'll try and clean up really quick.
didn't really help that much. Let's see if we can do something different. Let's go to active filtering and drop down the hertz. Sometimes you need to close the side window for it to update the image you see. Alright, so there's a delay, but we've kind of cleaned up that image. Now you typically are going to see two peaks, or at least one good peak. This is an eight cylinder engine, so it's about the halfway point. One, two, Three, four. So exhaust valves open, pushing out exhaust. Same there, same there, same there. But when we get towards the second half of the cylinders, we have disturbances going on. And at this point, you would want to use an overlay, which I'll try and pull up in a sec here. So this is a this is the uh, pressure waveform overlay you can get for free in the Microsoft Store. Thanks to Stephen McGrew, whoever you are. <clears throat> now, what this overlay is going to help with is looking at these waveforms. And we're going to get an idea of what's going on and when on the intake and exhaust pulses. So just Google pressure waveform overlays Microsoft. And that's that. So now what I like to do to go to full, close this, and at this point, take a screenshot. So Windows key on your laptop, and then print print screen at the same time. Get a screenshot. Close out of here. Let's pull up our overlay. File, open. Go to screenshots. Oh, sorry. There it is. Okay, we can pull this up. We can stretch it out. Okay, so we're going to go up here to number of cylinders eight, sink cylinder, a firing order. You can choose, I was in this window a second ago, this is why it was showing something. So 5.7 Hemi, number three was a coil that I was using as a trigger on the picoscope reading. And we need to figure out the firing order. One, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. So now that we have that information, we go in here and use the overlay. Now we never tore this 5.7 Hemi apart, but the in-cylinder indicated 
that we had um, something going on with valve timing from basically cam lub wear in cylinder three. Now, using this overlay, I'm gonna kind of look closer, and I don't like to make videos unless I know what caused the failure, but regardless, I knew it was mechanical in cylinder three. Now let's look at this. Um, cylinder three intake pull is gonna be right in this area. Now, if that's the case, this intake pull here should be low if there's a mechanical issue. And there is uh, a low intake pull for cylinder three. Now it is off a little bit. And I feel like that's because it needs to go right here. But these are intake pulls for each cylinder. So cylinder uh, two intake pull is right here. Cylinder one intake pull is right here. Cylinder 8 intake pull is right here. Cylinder 4 intake pull right here. And then so on. So cylinder 3, we have a low intake pull. This is a cranking test that I'm doing clear flow. It's no injector operation. You really shouldn't have any type of, uh, if you had a, a bad coil, well, it doesn't matter. You're not, you're not powering and firing a cylinder. So mechanically, Intake pulls shouldn't change. If you had a bad injector, same thing. So when you're seeing on a cranking test, uneven intake pulls, you should be seeing a mechanical issue, but it could also be a really flooded cylinder from a, a misfire happening too long. And now the cylinder wall is lacking oil and you have low bind, low compression temporarily. That's a kind of a, um, misfire induced low compression not sure what to call it but that can happen so if that's a situation you can check with the compression gauge add some oil and retest but these intake and exhaust pull sensors in the current clamp if you have it on a cart ready to go you can really have a, a nice quick setup uh, this is really helpful if you check a lot of older vehicles for drivability issues. So now in regards to the uh, pull sensors I was using for the intake and exhaust, go to Cody Diagnostics. And I believe he's in Arizona. He has a TikTok channel, really smart technician, really look up to him. Really want to say thank you for making these. Um, but you can basically use these pull sensors and I think it's going to be more and more of a trend with the newer drivability techs utilizing technology, but the um, pull sensors I was using are in this area. There's Gen 3, Gen 4. I think I was using uh, Gen 3 and they're about, yeah, 90 bucks, really good price. They seem to work for what I need it to do. He sells other stuff on here, except the cookies, because, yeah, I love cookies. Anyways, um, yeah, just really enjoy his products he's putting out. Seems like he works pretty hard. Check out the location here. Well, I don't see, maybe home, Let's see where he's located. Learner of Cody's Diagnostics and program, Programming. I'm a mobile diagnostic tech, specializing in advanced level diagnostics and module programming. It's 12 years in my free time I design, build diagnostic tools and help fellow technicians. That's awesome. And they're shipped around the world. I also participate in ATG. I'm here to help you make your shop more efficient. Okay. So yeah, I, I'm a real big fan of this um, person and what they're doing. 
and I'm also trying to contribute what I can to our industry, but there's guys out there like this that are definitely doing a better job than I am. Anyways, so check out his website. It's where I bought my pole sensors. Looks like he's using a top Don scan tool there. It's kind of an up and coming alternative to Autel and launch. Snap on bore scope, really pricey, but works okay. So in this video right now, we're going to look at uh, 2012 Dodge Ram 1500. Had a misfire. Shop had replaced everything, and that included the ignition coil, uh, spark plugs, maybe even an injector. But things were moved around or replaced. 